Dependent drop-down lists are dead in Excel. I am so excited for these two new features, which mean that we can completely move past it. So let's say that we want to enter a three-tiered location like this, and I want to enter this place, Adrar. I can just kind of type that in, press enter, and then it searches for whatever I type, regardless of whether that's at the beginning or, or the last word or any middle word as well. Um, I can go for Estonia, and then I can get all the ones underneath there and choose that one as well. And then here I have the text split function brand new that is able to give me the breakdown in terms of continent, country, and then province. My name is David Benayim and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of stuff. And I love showcasing the new stuff. This feature, for example, is brand new. So if we had to do it the old way with dependent drop-down lists instead of what we did before, here's how it would look. I'd have to click Africa and Algeria. Even if I go fast and I'm choosing places near the top of the list, it's still taking a long time as a data inputter. Then I've got Europe and Estonia. There was no searchable stuff beforehand and you just had to do it. Now, these are this is what dependent means. It means that when I choose Europe here, I can only choose European countries. If I were to choose, for example, Oceania, I can only choose countries within that. And this has been around for a while and there has been so much work done on it. Let me show you a glimpse of how much people need these dependent drop-down lists. So here I am in Google dependent drop-down list Excel, and I can see how much content there is. Even if I go to page six, these are all still about dependent drop-down lists in Excel. If I go to YouTube, look how much stuff there is as well as I keep scrolling. All of these videos are pretty much about that with a couple of small exceptions. And then I search for another term, hierarchical drop-down list. Look, there's my video. <laughs> and actually I keep going and keep going and there's still more things. But until recently, it was very, very tedious to do. It's tedious for someone to enter data into, and it's really tedious for someone to build it. Um, to do it, especially with three or more layers, it just takes absolutely ages to build it. You have to create one list for each sub list. So I had to create here one list for Estonia, one for Algeria, one for Bhutan. And if I want to get it for every country in the world, which is pretty much what I have here, forget about it. It's going to be 195 lists and then one list for each continent. And you have to name each list. It's so tedious that we just need to find a way past it. So let me show you these brand new features and how they can work. This has just been released at the time of making this video for people on the beta channel of Excel, which means that you have the features prior to release for everyone else. These will be soon released for the monthly channel and eventually for every Office 365 subscriber. But for now, it's only available for people who opt into the beta channel. However, if you don't have that version of it, I'm going to show you how you can do this same thing later on in this video. So don't worry, I will have a solution for you, even if you're not on this version. So here I have actually two windows set up of the same workbook. I do that with view and new window. Not many people know that exists, but it means you can just create another window of the same thing and they are dependent. So if I change some text here, then it changes there as well. So this means that I can see my list and what I'm entering here at the same time. So here I've got my location list and this is every country in the world, what continent they're in, what region they're in, and then a location as well, which combines that with the province as well. So here's a four tiered list. So continent and then region, country, and then province. And here I have it with three lists because it would have just taken me too long to that demo with four levels. So this is what I've done for the dependent list. But um, in order to get this to work, I have just created this, which combines all of them together. I like using this Chevron. Um, I find it quite useful to indicate that that is bigger than the next one that's bigger than the next one, kind of like a hierarchy system. I'm going to show you how to make this in a second. But first, let's show you once you have this, how you can make the list. So what you need to do is over here, you select some cells and you go to data and then data validation. And then here you're going to choose list and in source, you're going to select all of this. 
That's it. Creating a data validation list is exactly the same as it's always been, but now it becomes searchable and it ignores blanks. And I'm going to press OK. And this is, as you can see, it's 4,000 rows long. But when you've got this kind of thing, sure, it's extraordinarily tedious to search like that. But if you have the ability to do a type and it auto completes, then you can get to it really, really fast. Notice that whatever I type, it will search for any words. So if I'm looking for Aust Australia, Austria, um, it will look for it here and here it's Ost in Norway. So it will find it there as well. Uh, Africa, we'll find it there. We'll find it in the sub list. We'll find it in Central African Republic, etc., etc. So you just can kind of click the ones that you want, but you can just keep typing until you get it. So let's say we want to create that list. So I'm going to write a combined version here. I'm going to use the function called TextJoin. TextJoin is not particularly new. It's been out since 2019, uh, but I love it. I use it all the time. So delimiter, we're going to say speech marks space chevron space speech marks. Chevron is just greater than sign. I like it because it kind of implies that this is bigger than this, this is bigger than this, but you can use anything that you want there. Then comma, ignore empty. I usually do true and then comma, text one, comma, text two. I'll just going to select this as a range, close my brackets, and then I can just double click it to make sure that it goes all the way down there like that. Now that we've got that, I've taken away the other columns for clutter. We're going to look at how to extract things and then how to split it. So here I can say continent, I can do equals text before, and then I can say, click here, comma, delimiter is going to be like that, chevron, in speech box, then I just close my brackets because the others are optional. And there you go, I had just extracted it. Next, I can have text after, you can guess what it does, but I'm gonna do something a little bit more advanced, comma, delimiter, and then instance number, I'm going to write two here. And that way it skips over the first one and it takes everything from the second one onwards, which is country and then province. This was so incredibly difficult to do before. You had to use a crazy combination of write and search. This is such a breath of fresh air. Text split even more because text split can actually give you results over multiple columns. Let's see, equals text split. And then the text is going to be there, comma, delimiter. Also pretty easy to write. We're going to leave the others blank. And then let me make it a bit better. So continent, region, country, and province, like this. Notice it has this thing around it. Um, and then text join, I've actually written it here. So if I drag it up, it's just the other way around. So here I've done a text join with a dash instead of a chevron. And here, if I drag it down, we'll see all of it come down with it. So all of these come down and all of these come down as well. So a couple of things you'll notice. Firstly, it doesn't respond well with errors. So if there's blanks, it deems that as an error, as do these, they don't really respond well. Um, I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. And secondly, if you click on it, you get this kind of blue outline with a shadow around everything that's linked. This is to show you that the results of this formula appear in multiple columns. So if I had some text here, then it would give me the spill error, which means that this kind of now blue dotted line is saying that it can't spill into that region. So if I delete that, it goes away. But these ones, these are kind of harder to, to fix. You need to actually say in whatever function equals if this is equal to speech marks, speech marks, then return speech marks, speech marks, otherwise, Return that, close your brackets, and then you get it showing up that way. Drag it down, and then you can see it not appear with that blank. Text join though, text join, if there's nothing there, it still doesn't give you an error, which is nice. Um, but you have to do that for text before and text after as well. The other place where this fails is if I were to make this into a table. So select that and go to insert table, press OK then this will give me those errors, the spill error, because a dynamic array, which is this that goes over multiple rows or columns, does not work inside a table. So I'm going to need to undo that. So some advanced text split stuff. Here we can split it over rows instead of columns. So I can do equals text split, and then 
click on the cell above, comma, and then I can press a comma straight from column delimiter to row delimiter. Now, this one is not square brackets, but it does still work. And then here I can say speech marks, space, ampersand, space, speech marks, close my brackets, and then I get it showing up like this. Or you can even have row and column delimiters at the same time. I can say equals, I can just write SPL because it does just search that, autocomplete. And then I can click there. Column delimiter will be speech marks, space, ampersand, space, speech marks. And then row delimiter will be the semicolon like that. Always know your spaces, close your brackets, and then you get it showing up like this. But a couple of things, we have the blank space here, and these are NA values. The reason we have the blank space is because there's two ands next to each other. And this is because it can't create the perfect matrix. So you can fix all of those. You can do equals split, text split, this one, comma, column delimiter can be, and then row delimiter, same as before. And then ignore empty, so I'm going to say true, like we saw for text join. And then pad width, I'm just going to say none, like that. And here you go, it's now showing none in all of those places, and it does skip that blank. Uh, another thing you can do is you can split it all in rows using multiple delimiters. So I can do equals text split, and then this cell, and then I can say, give me, let's say for rows, I'm going to say curly brackets now, speech marks and speech marks, comma, speech marks, like that, close my curly brackets, and close my brackets, and then it is doing it all like that for all of the delimiters. You can list as many as you want in there as well. So this is a use case that I've used this feature for in my company for years and years and years using Google Sheets because it allows for this. Um, we have a consulting firm and we want this kind of thing to happen very often. So the idea is that people enter the dates, the client, the hours, the task, and then any extras. And then we have some formulas here that do certain things. So um, if they enter the client, now sometimes we call this client chain, sometimes we call it STP, but whatever you type, you'll get the answer to that, which is really great. Um, and then here we have the, the name of the consultant and then uh, what kind of task it is, and then we have the abbreviation. So I love this because for me, I just know my abbreviation super well. So if I just do DBN, that's David Non-Billable, DBD is David Data Consulting. And then it just does that and populates this automatically really, really nicely. Um, and then some descriptions here. And this uses the text split feature. So we did talk about what to do if you don't have Office 365 with the beta channel. Now I'm gonna show you how I've been doing it for years and that is actually using Google Sheets. So let's have a look at that. So here I have the same data pretty much in Google Sheets where I have my task that we're going to use a searchable dropdown list for. And then I've got the split function that we're gonna use here. Google Sheets has a function called split and not text split, but it does pretty much the same thing. So I've already created my list over here and I've used text join. Text join works the exact same way in Google Sheets as it does in Excel. So I'm just going to go to this column and I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna choose data and data validation. And then here, I'm going to select where the column is. You can leave it with loads of blanks at the end, that doesn't matter, just like the, the updated Excel version. Click on reject input, press save, and then go back here, and then it allows you to do it. So I can do, like before, DBA will give me David Benign Accounting, or if I want all of Carol's ones, I can get all of Carol's ones. Or if I want everyone that does data projects, I can choose them like that. Um, Google Sheets does also give you this indicator when there is something wrong here. The name is obviously different, but you can type in David and then just correct it. Next, we've got split. So equals split, and then this one, and then delimiter, and then we're going to do same as before like that. Then we're going to close our brackets and it does split it again. It doesn't do the blue outline, but if I have some text here, it will give me that error like we saw before. And if I drag it down, then over here, it still gives me the error like it did in Excel. And over here, it does actually split it again because it finds the space. Uh, Google Sheets does work a bit differently. So if I do space that and then space, 
and it looks for every time where there's a space and it also splits it. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix that. So split by each and we're gonna do false. And then if I drag it down or control D like this, then it is going to give me what I need to. It doesn't look at that. It just looks at every time where it's exactly this one there. So um, the last thing that I'll point out, and I do this for my Excel and Google Sheets spreadsheets, is color coding. I love having formula instructions on top of each one, whether it's choose that's restricted, free type, or a formula one. And here, if anything says not billable, then it will pop up in that color. I use conditional formatting to do that, which you have in both Excel and Google Sheets, um, format and conditional formatting here in Google Sheets, for example. All right, so if you like this video, then I've got plenty more like this on my channel. I love covering the new stuff. And this has been one of my favorite videos to make of recent times because I've used this procedure in Google Sheets for years and I'm now able to take it to Excel. Um, Excel online does have searchable drop-down lists, but on Excel desktop, you do for the time being need to have the beta version and definitely for the text split function, you need that as well. Thanks for watching.